Grand Operations was one of the key focuses during the build-up to Battlefield 5. With the success of the Operations game mode in Battlefield 1, DICE decided to double down on it and bring it back for their next game, but tweaking it to give it more variety. Whilst the team's intentions were good, the end result for me has been largely disappointing, and right now I've been actively avoiding playing Grand Operations in Battlefield 5. I think DICE can do much, much better than this. From my own point of view, what made Battlefield 1's operations so awesome and why I loved playing them so much was the relentless struggle for ground across multiple sectors and multiple maps, the clear messaging of which team was actually winning, and the absolute chaos that 64-player combat brings. Three battalions of soldiers for the attackers, giving the attacking team multiple chances to advance forward against infinite waves of defenders, really amplified the struggle. And whether you won the operation or not, I'd argue that in most matches you'd experience some frantic combat across different map locations, and of course across different maps as well. The overall sense of scale, the narrative, and just the relentless fighting really did give it a very grand feeling. Overall, it was a great package, and DICE really hit a home run with the game mode, and with the concept, I think they found something that can truly compete with Conquest as a staple game mode of the franchise. Then comes Battlefield 5, where DICE took that grand feeling, added that to the name of the game mode, and tried to set up something that gave more variety. But I think they would have been better off leaving the mode as it was, to be honest. In general, the mode is just completely devoid of anything that even comes close to grand. It's lacking that epic struggle, it's lacking that tension, and in most cases, it's just not very well set up anymore. Let's start off with the Airborne game mode. At the moment, Airborne is the starter game mode for Grand Operations, and it sees the attackers para-dropping into the first map. It's their job to destroy artillery emplacements with bombs that are located on the ground. Now, theoretically, and perhaps cinematically, it's a good starting mode. It places you into the narrative of starting an epic battle for land and supplies against the enemy faction. Paradropping into a war zone, although I'm sure in real life is absolutely terrifying, does make for a very epic moment in a first-person shooter game, getting you into the thick of the action straight away. However, in practice, at the moment, with the bomb icons being permanently visible on the screen and on the minimap, it makes it far too easy for the defending team to halt the attacker's advance. Now, this is being fixed in the December update. DICE has already confirmed the visibility of the icon will be greatly reduced unless a defending player spots the bomb carrier. So that's one improvement coming to Airborne. But that doesn't ease my complaint, however, because I'd argue the start of a Grand Operation should be the easiest part of the entire Grand Operation. In Battlefield 1, it was communicated many times by the dev team that the start of an operation, that first sector, and maybe the second sector as well, those should be the easiest for the attackers to capture. And then, moving into other sectors and the second map, it should become progressively harder for them to capture sectors and advance forwards. That structure makes sense for the defending team as well. Naturally, they'd be retreating closer and closer to their stronghold, making it easier for them to defend that land. But that feeling doesn't really translate into Airborne. The defending team have such a huge advantage with visibility, of course the attackers dropping in from the sky, the attackers having little to no control over their parachutes once they're deployed, and the action is then split up between four different artillery placements. That makes it very, very easy for the defending team to split their numbers and defend multiple different points at the same time. However, my concerns over difficulty here can be wiped away by remembering that it doesn't matter at all if the attackers destroy all four or none of the artillery placements, because the Grand Operation will move on to the next day of fighting regardless of the result in Airborne. Why? I assume it's to make it so the entire Grand Operation doesn't end inside 10 minutes but I'm left feeling hollow with that because it's almost like a fake progression element. One of those participation medals, an everyone wins mentality. I'm not a big fan of that. Moving on into day two of a grand operation, for me this is the best part of a grand operation, although it suffers from one issue that I mentioned from day one. It doesn't appear to matter about the outcome of this day. You will always progress 
to day three. The attackers could be completely stopped in their tracks by the defending team, but it doesn't matter at all because the game mode has a hard rule that will always move you into day three anyway. It's as if whatever effort you put in is almost totally disregarded by the game mode. I will say there are certain elements built into the transition between days to reflect the outcome of the previous day, so if you blow up all the artillery placements in Airborne, you will get more reinforcements for the next day's game mode. Usually that's Breakthrough or Conquest Assault. There is some reward there, but it's not really emphasised very well either, and it can be lost in translation between the days. There needs to be more signposting of that reward, or of no reward, it needs to be amplified and impressed upon the attacking team more, I think. Having just mentioned game modes, let's talk about them for just a second. I like Day 2 the most because it's often the breakthrough game mode that you get to play, which is of course the operations game mode from Battlefield 1. It's just been renamed and slotted into the grand operation. I've spent the last week playing Breakthrough almost exclusively outside of the Grand Operation system, because for me, it's just such a fun game mode. It gives me the feeling of epic scale, you've got chaos in there, and the tension that I'm looking for. The procedural nature of the mode makes it feel like a big push all the way from the start to the finish, and with the action being focused onto two or three flags at a time, you can always get involved in pushes, defences and flanks until the round's over. It offers that constant high level of action that keeps me entertained. Conquest Assault, however, not so much. Playing Conquest Assault on the Hamada map more often than not, in my experience, results in massive ticket differences, the defending team holding their ground and just winning extremely quickly. Sometimes the attackers take a flag further back and manage to slow down the ticket bleed and get the game forced into a normal round of conquest where flags keep changing hands, but in general I just don't think the game mode is all that appealing to play. As the attackers, you can see the ticket bleed start instantly, and once your tickets drop down below the enemy teams, you kinda know it's gonna be a bit of a struggle to claw back a win. Often as well, the attackers will just run at the first objective, closest to their spawn, and try and capture it, and of course they're met by 32 enemy players who are all waiting to snipe their head off, and gameplay just descends into a boring spawn die loop. You often can't break out of that loop after the start of a round either because the enemies will just create this wall in front of you. You could of course use vehicles to push through or planes to power drop out of, but in my experience those opportunities don't present themselves very often, and with your tickets bleeding so fast you might only have a few chances to really do anything before the round is over. I don't think Conquest Assault is suited to Grand Operations. It's a mode that allows players to run all over the map, capturing little bits of land here and there, rather than emphasising that big push forwards through a location procedurally and retaining the land that you've captured, or defending the land you still own, as is the case for the defenders. It's just not a very good game mode in my opinion, and if it was removed from Battlefield 5, you wouldn't catch me complaining at all. Moving on to day three, this is arguably the most frustrating day of Grand Operations because it's the day that actually matters. If the attackers win this day, they win the entire Grand Operation. If the defenders win, they win the entire Grand Operation, regardless of the performance of either team in days one and two. Days 1 and 2 may as well not even exist then. If this is how the game mode is going to work moving forwards, why even bother playing out the previous two days if it's only the third day that really matters? That, to me, is a massive flaw in the design of the entire experience. If Day 3 ends in a draw or only a close victory for either team, then the Grand Operation proceeds to Day 4, Final Stand. I've only played Final Stand once in my 40 hours of playtime so far, so I think it'd be unfair for me to even give this game mode a review, and that in itself, again, I think shows how poorly thought out the entire Grand Operations system is. If a decider day is implemented, and that decider day doesn't actually need to come into play all that often because the third day only matters, then why even bother having it in the game at all? 
I think it's clear to tell that I'm not a fan of grand operations in Battlefield 5, and I don't believe I'm alone either. I've seen lots of people just stating that grand operations no longer feels like an operation, and I think what they mean is it doesn't feel like Battlefield 1 operations, where you're constantly pushing through and you feel like you're doing something. Some people are actually saying that grand operations is just a glorified playlist, and you know what? I'd agree with you. At the moment, I don't see why Battlefield 1's implementation of Operations was not sufficient enough for Battlefield 5 at launch. I think it would have been safer for DICE to use that Battlefield 1 formula, implement it into Battlefield 5, and use that to launch their game, and then, in the live service, in the future, introduce different game modes later down the line as kind of like an experiment to see what players might like as part of an operation. At the moment, each day in the Grand Operation feels completely disconnected from the next. There's no momentum maintained between days, and the fact that team performance in days one and two is completely disregarded is just a huge oversight by the DICE team. It's not clear what's happening half the time, which leaves you confused, and of course confusion leads to players not caring about the outcome. I've actually witnessed a lot of players leaving Grand Operations between days as well because they're unaware that there are more days to play through, or they're just that bored that they don't want to play anymore. In trying to make Operations from Battlefield 1 even better, which would have been awesome, DICE has actually made things worse, which is not awesome. In an attempt to fix this, this is my suggestion, and I think DICE needs to take things one step at a time when it comes to Grand Operations, because it could be that just a few fixes actually improves the entire scenario. For me, I'd like to see DICE adapt Grand Operations and integrate and highlight the breakthrough game mode more so. That's what made Battlefield 1 Operations so special, and I think taking things back to basics might be a good start for them. DICE has already taken steps back with the Frontlines game mode. In the December patch, that's going to be returning to its Battlefield 1 formula because players weren't fans of the changes that DICE made. And I wouldn't be surprised to see DICE do exactly the same with Grand Operations. Try and make some changes to make the experience more cohesive and just in general more entertaining to play. I'd also say that the inclusion of music in Battlefield 1 operations added to the drama and theatre of the mode. Music is present in Battlefield 5's version of Grand Operations, but it doesn't have the same presence as it did previously. And without the breakthrough game mode being the constant mode, you don't get those crescendos of music when charging forwards to attack the next sector, unless of course you're playing breakthrough during day two. Grand Operations for me is just now bland operations. We're even missing the narrative-driven cutscenes from Battlefield 1. I know a lot of players wanting to skip those beforehand, after they'd seen them a few times, but regardless of that, they did provide a sense of reason for what was about to happen. They tied the two maps together in Battlefield 1, and here in Battlefield 5, I think they're sorely missed. They could really help tie the days together. At the moment, we just have a black screen and some white text on them. It kind of feels like the team just ran out of time and slotted some cards into the sequence. It feels amateur, and it's a clear step backwards from what we had in Battlefield 1. So, for now, I'll continue playing the breakthrough game mode separate from Grand Operations in Battlefield 5, because for me, it's just a more enjoyable, engaging experience, and it's as close as I can get to the Operations from Battlefield 1. I absolutely loved Operations in Battlefield 1, and I'm kind of sad that that experience doesn't currently exist in Battlefield 5. I think DICE has a lot of work to do here, but what do you guys think? Do you agree with me and think that Grand Operations needs an adrenaline shot to make things more engaging, or are you enjoying them? Let me know down below in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on, that way you won't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos, and a big thank you for watching today. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.